All right, you guys, so we're starting off bare-faced. Now, I have some notes here in front of me just to talk to you guys about to kind of keep me on track. So I'm not gonna be talking too much about the products that I'm putting on my face. Everything will be linked below. I'll try and say what I'm using, but the main point of this video is just like get ready and talk to you guys about how I'm feeling midway through the year about my low buy, etc etc so that being said i am going to be starting out by using the becca backlight priming filter i don't know maybe i should scoot closer to the camera and get my face a little bit closer also i am no makeup wizard and i feel like i look ridiculous at times when i put makeup on so like no judgments as to how i apply my makeup please this is i think the first like get ready with me or like putting makeup on my face video that i filmed with my new camera i've had my new camera for a while now um but i'm hoping that the focus turns out okay i'm going in with the physician's formula healthy foundation i recently pulled this in my shop my stash because i thought it would be a good summertime foundation i'm literally using the viewfinder right now too as a mirror probably not the best option I don't always put my makeup on like a four-year-old, only most of the time. Okay, so we're gonna start off with this. What I've been doing because the the shade I have in the Physicians Formula is LN4 is not quite the right shade match for me. My nose gets so runny every time I put makeup on. I've been mixing in just a hair of the L'Oreal Pro Glow in shade 206, and I've really liked this combo. Let me get a mirror and i just use my beauty blender not beauty blender beauty sponge from real techniques to blend mine is so dirty right now i definitely need to wash my sponges tonight and i add a touch more of the pro glow I actually really like these two foundations mixed together. I just feel like it gives like a super healthy sort of glowy vibe to the skin. I don't mind a little glow in the summertime as long as it doesn't like look too greasy, which I feel like it kind of does a little bit right now in the viewfinder. But once we get more makeup on the face, I'm hoping it'll go down a little bit. Um, actually... I'm just going to spray a little bit of the makeup finishing spray, even though we're not finished yet, by Scandinavia. I do have to go into work and write my schedule after this, so I would like my makeup to last a little bit. Plus, I feel like this, like, because it actually helps set the makeup in place and, like, really lock it into place, it's kind of like the Urban Decay all-nighter setting spray. I feel like it dries the skin out a little bit um so i feel like maybe it'll take away a little bit of the glow but i really have been enjoying that foundation combination all right guys i'm gonna let that dry a little bit but i want to talk about how i think my low buy is going and chat with you guys a little bit about that my makeup rehab for the month of june should have just recently been posted if you guys haven't checked that out i will definitely link it for you guys and the last couple months have been a bit of a fail in the low buy category so i gave myself a budget of 125 dollars to spend every single month with month which i know isn't doesn't even equate to like the reverse rouge like it it adds up to over a thousand dollars over the course of the year but i wanted to be on a low buy for me and i guess maybe i could I, it could be considered more of even just like a beauty budget type of thing um i feel like this whole craze was kind of kicked off by hannah louise petten i think is her full name i'll leave her channel link down below for you guys um and i know she's doing more of a beauty budget this year so i feel like mine doesn't even necessarily fall into the category of a low buy but ne but more so a beauty budget in the last couple months i you know my birthday month may was also the sephora vib sale and i had some gift cards but even so, I still went over that $125 mark. And then this month, I ended up being able to redeem points both at Ulta and at Sephora. And I got quite a bit of makeup, but I still spent some money. And what I found over the last two months is even with like gift cards, like when I'm getting a lot of makeup, it like it gives me a sense of like, I need more, I need more, I need more. Whereas in the past, when I wasn't like in like February, I think I had a pretty good month where I didn't buy a lot of makeup. I wasn't feeling the urge or the need to go 
get makeup so it's almost like when I buy makeup it, it doesn't satisfy a need and I almost feel the need then or like feel like I just want more and more and more so I am gonna try and do a no buy for the month of July because I just need to reel it in I need to get my priorities straight and we it, it's just something I need to do because that is definitely something I've noticed about myself personally uh, so you guys will have to let me know if you kind of feel the same way it just feels like when I'm buying I want to buy more and more and more when I'm not buying or like when I've been you know better at talking myself out of things or just being a more conscientious consumer then I don't feel the need to continue to buy 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 I am gonna go in with the Laura Mercier flawless fusion concealer so that is like one of my biggest takeaways so far this entire year but specifically like something that I've really realized about myself over the course of the last two months this looks really light this concealer right now is more my not self tan shade but it'll still work so I can definitely so I can definitely tell you already that I really don't think I'm gonna hit my goal of only spending like twelve hundred and fifty dollars this year like I just don't think I'm gonna reach that goal and that's okay like I've definitely learned a lot already this year just about my makeup habits about like consumerism and like my makeup consumption habits and I feel like I'm already like way ahead of where I was last year and I'll get more into that but I have decided to share this journey with you guys and I don't want to sit here and lie to you guys and say like yep like I'm perfect I'm gonna be under $1,250 this year like I, I'm not gonna reach that goal and again that's okay and it's important to me that I share that with you guys because you may be in the same boat where you set a goal for yourself and you might not reach that goal this year and that's just life like we're not going to reach every goal that we set for ourselves and it might seem some of you might be like well you know like you could if you really tried and that is true like I could just stop buying makeup for the rest of the year and I would hit my goal but that also just I don't want to do that I have really been enjoying my YouTube channel over the course of the last year and a half and I really do want to do more review style videos on my channel and in order to do that I need to buy products. What's important to me, and again I'm going to touch on this a little bit more throughout this video, what's important to me is that I'm buying things to review then that I actually want or that have a place in my makeup collection. In the past I've just bought like new releases just to buy them and like think that I'm going to review them and then not even review them on my channel. Um, I should probably keep doing my makeup <laughs> um, so I just like haven't even thought about what I'm buying and if I can come out of this this year being a consumer that actually thinks about her purchases but still buys you know a decent amount of makeup I'm okay with that it's when I was buying stuff that like doesn't even make sense for like my makeup preferences my lifestyle my skin type my needs that's where I, I was having an issue so even though I am not going to likely reach that budget goal I set for myself, as long as I've made good changes to my consumption, like my makeup consumption, I'm still happy with the results. So I'm a little disappointed in myself for the last two months of as far as like makeup consumption is concerned, but overall there are there are things that i am proud of myself for or like that i'm happy that i'm learning i'm gonna use mostly cream products today so i'm gonna go in with the ulta face sculpting color stick i think in the shade contour yes i've actually really been enjoying this contour stick or like i pretty much use it as a cream bronzer by the way my laundry machine is going in the other room if you can hear it um you guys are probably like well that's a lot of cream bronzer but it's just the way I like to apply my makeup really weird um shoot I lost my train of thought oh so as far as my makeup rehab updates so in the beginning of the year I remember each month I was talking to you guys about makeup temptations or like products that were tempting me and I stopped doing that either like in March or April um I'll probably want to add a little bit more to this side but we'll see The reason I'm doing like a thicker line here you guys and going over it a couple of times is because I'm using this more as a bronzer rather than a contour. So anyway, I stopped talking to you guys about products that were tempting me and instead 
of like making a list of product temptations i feel like lately i've just been buying anything that's been tempting me without like writing it down and thinking about it for a little bit instead of just been like impulsively buying and that kind of goes back to the like how i've been feeling about you know i had all these points i redeemed them and then i just felt the need to get more and more and more because i was like so excited about all this new stuff and then i just wanted to like feel that excitement again so I definitely want to get back to talking to you guys about products that are tempting me and hope that that kind of helps reel it in a little bit. I would like to not spend much money until the next Sephora VIB sale. Like I said, I think I'm going to try and do no by July. And then if I can do no by August, that'd be awesome. If the Persona Identity Palette, the two comes out, I really do want to pick that up. And I'm sure there'll be more makeup releases that come out that I'm like, really wanting to pick up but I really want to challenge myself to not buy makeup for a couple months and set aside money for the Sephora VIB sale because I know no matter what I always go ham during that um so I've also started to do my shop my stashes every two weeks to try and cycle through my makeup collection more to help me like not feel bored to see if I've like been buying out of boredom and I actually do feel like this will help now that I'm trying to do this no buy because I've actually really been enjoying cycling through my makeup this year I it was the first year that I feel like I've actually gotten love out of my makeup collection because in the past I was just constantly buying new stuff so it's been fun to like actually take the time to enjoy my makeup collection and I definitely want to get back to that okay see how pretty that is like maybe I won't like this when I go back to edit but I just feel like it just I don't know, I've been digging cream products lately. I don't know what's wrong with me. So then speaking about just like purchases over the year, I wanted to talk to you guys about whether or not I've regretted purchasing anything or like how I'm feeling about the items that I brought into my collection this year. So I actually have three products here that I, not like regret, but like, you know, I'll, I'll explain. Okay, so first I have this Cover Effects Power Play Foundation. Now I did get this by redeeming Ulta Points, so I didn't end up really paying for this, but this is a, a foundation that I just really don't like, and I really have to manipulate it to make it work for my skin, and I just kind of wish that I had gotten something else with, with my money or my points, but I, this is one that I did think about. Like I had been thinking about this for a while and it had been tempting me for a while. So I'm not like super, super mad at myself for getting this. This is another one of those products that I'd been thinking about for a long time. And then I finally purchased it. It's the Fenty Matchstick in the shade Amber, which is a contour shade. And it just isn't my favorite product by any means. So a part of me is like, doesn't necessarily like I use this as a nose contour and that's fine this will take me forever to get through that way it's just not a product right now that I found a way to use it that I love so this is another product that I felt like you know my collection didn't necessarily need anyway probably not a product that I really needed but I had been thinking about this one for months so again not mad at that purchase the one that I probably regret the most is this Smashbox Studio Skin of Flawless 24 Hour Concealer. And the reason I regret this is because I just bought this on an absolute whim and I don't love it. It's not a product like I ended up purchasing uh, the Milk Little Cream Blush Stick on a whim, but I actually ended up really liking that. I purchased this, I think, at the same time that I purchased the Fenty Concealer and I was really excited about the Fenty Concealer. I wanted to do a review on my channel and I ended up picking this up as well because I was like, oh, I can just start doing tons of concealer reviews on my channel and then I, I I mean I did the Fenty concealer review but I just I do want to get doing more uh review style videos on my channel but I didn't even end up reviewing this and I didn't love it now I do think I can end up using this like I think I can finish this up it's not like I hate it but I'm disappointed in myself because this was a total purchase on a whim product and I just want to make sure like I'm thinking about every product that I'm bringing into my collection I've also found, I should get back to doing my makeup again. Those are the three products that I can think of that I brought into my collection this year that I'm really like, mm, I probably don't need those in my collection. Shockingly, everything else that I brought in, I, I do enjoy and I do really like. I don't really have any other like regrets, if you will. But I still do think like I brought a lot of makeup into my collection this year that I really shouldn't have because the goal wasn't to bring so much in this year. Speaking of that milk, 
cream blush. I'm going to be using that on my cheeks today. It's in the shade Work. Looks like this. And I honestly just like tap it onto my cheeks like this and then just blend it out. Um, okay, what else did I want to cover today with you guys? Oh yeah, I wanted to tell you guys. So another thing I found out about myself um, is shockingly i feel like a lot of people have like more issues with online buying because it's just like so easy to just hit like purchase i personally struggle so much more when i go in store like i'll go into sephora to like get like for example my husband will send me in to get the origin spot remover that he likes and i'll be like okay like i'm gonna be strong i shouldn't swatch anything and then i go in and every time I swatch stuff and I come out, it's like Target. Like you go in for freaking, like you go in to buy bananas and then you come out with a cart full of stuff and you spend hundreds of dollars that you had no intention of buying really when you entered. That happens to me. I cannot enter Sephora without buying anything. I've made it a couple times into Ulta without buying stuff, a couple of times, but that's also very rare. So I just have found that it's safer, if you will, for me to not go into stores which is also a struggle because i do love to just like go in and swatch stuff but I, I literally can't make it out alive i cannot make it out without buying stuff sorry i feel like i've been looking at the viewfinder this entire video so apologies in advance um see that's pretty that's just like it's i love using cream products it's just like a nice natural face <laughs> um okay what else? Maybe we'll go to eyes next. Okay, another thing that I'm at least happy about is I feel like this year I've really started to hone in on specific makeup categories and really curate those. For example, primers, although I've been really into trying primers this year, I've also really learned what I like from a primer. And I think this is a category of my makeup collection that I can really curate down to my favorites plus like one to two that I'm testing. And once I get to that point, I really, it, I kind of wanted it to be like a one in one out sort of mentality with my primers. So I never have more than like five or six primers at a time, which I know still sounds like a lot, but again, I have a YouTube channel. I want to test products out for you guys. I want to review products for you guys. And then I also want to have my favorites in my collection. Foundation is another one. And then setting sprays trying to curate my setting spray collection um but that is exciting to me because in the past i would just bring stuff in and bring stuff in and bring stuff in and i never really got to i never would like focus on products i would just bop around from product to product to product and now that i've actually been like cycling through my collection and really focused on my collection that i have right now I've learned so much more about my makeup preferences and what I like and what products I like and I'm really excited about getting to actually like curate specific categories within my makeup collection. So that is another thing that I'm really happy about and that I feel like I wouldn't have done if I wasn't doing this budgeted project. Okay, I quickly did brows off camera and I'm not going to do anything too, too intense today for the eyes. I just have my soft glam palette that I pulled out. And I think, I literally think I might just go in with this rose pink shimmer on my lids. Like I said, I have to go to work and write my, I think I said, I have to go to work and write my schedule today. And so I don't want to be like too extra for work. Holy moly, I forget how like intensely pigmented this is. I'm gonna have to blend that out with something. Um, some things that I've been doing to like keep me motivated and inspired by my collection twice this year I've done throughout the whole month. I use a different eyeshadow palette every single day So that's really helped me to get some good use and good love out of my eyeshadow palette collection Which has been exciting palettes used to be something that I was that like really triggered me to like want to go buy and while I did set myself a goal of only purchasing five palettes this year which i'm gonna fail in that category too <laughs> um i have been like it's not like i just go all buy go out and buy every single eyeshadow palette that releases where in the past like I, that's what i wanted to do which just like no that's not practical it's just not practical at all um so that is another category that 
I mean, I have so many palettes in my collection right now. Like I said, I just filmed that makeup inventory and I have 77 eyeshadow palettes in my collection, which is way more than a person needs. Um, sorry, I keep covering up my eyes. It's way more than a person needs, and I do get that. Eyeshadow palettes is like also an area in my collection that I do like feel like a part of me like collects as well. So like I'm okay with having a high number, but I know I have palettes in my collection that I should have never purchased. I don't need. So I definitely want to do another eyeshadow palette declutter before the year is over. Um, and I've been having tons of fun doing like a palette a day for 28 days in February and 31 days in May. If you guys are interested in checking those videos out, I'll link them below. But I've been just trying to come up with like creative things to keep me inspired by my collection. And I think that's super important. If you're on a low bias, you just have to get creative and find new ways to get inspired by your collection. I know like some things I could do is delete some of the apps off my phone, like the Sephora and Ult app, I could delete. Um, or like not go on trend mode and look at the new makeup releases coming out, but I enjoy looking at that stuff So and it's not they're not super triggers for me like sure if something new releases like I'll get excited about it um, But I've been a lot better this year at Talking myself out of things again. The last two months have been a little bit rough a little bit rocky been wanting to buy a lot but we're gonna get back on track if you guys have anything more you'd like to see from my channel or my makeup rehab specific videos about like like I said I want to talk about makeup temptations again but if there's specific things you want me to cover leave me a comment below and let me know also if you're doing any sort of low buy this year let me know as well um would love to hear how it's going for you guys what works well for you what are triggers for you i would love to hear those kinds of things i think we're gonna call it good on the eyes i just went in with rose pink all over the lid and then i mix burnt orange and dusty rose which kind of seems like a weird pairing but i just mix that in the crease and we're gonna roll with that i would love to know what makeup categories you guys feel like you have really well curated in your collection and I would also love to know um, what makeup categories you feel like are triggers for you. So like for me, when a new eyeshadow palette releases, like I always do a double take. But again, I've gotten a lot better of, at talking myself out of eyeshadow palettes. Impossible to put eyeliner on and talk at the same time. I went with the Essence uh, Extreme Lasting Pencil in 6 Silky Nude. I love this pencil. And then I'm going to go in with the Mile High Club Mascara from Wonder Beauty and mix it with the Marc Jacobs Neor. Um, I also feel like this year, bronzers. I've been all about bronzers. And primers, like I said, I really have been trying to curate that part of my collection, but I feel like I've been super interested in primers this year, and I'm not really sure why. I'm still on the hunt for a really good concealer. I have some, but I feel like, you know, my perfect concealer, concealer is still out there waiting for me. So that's, I don't know, like, but I also don't get like that excited about concealers. Foundations are de a definite, like I get so excited about foundations and I wanna try every single foundation, but I would love to hear what categories you guys get most excited about, which categories you buy the most of, or like get you most excited to buy. But that's really all of the info that I wanted to cover in today's video, just recapping mid-year where we are in the quote low buy i'm not gonna lie i am really nervous about the holiday season just in general not just for like the sephora vib sale but just for like all the holiday releases i know it's like so exciting when when everyone releases their holiday stuff we'll see where i'm at as far as pumping reviews out but I feel like if I'm like to a good point where I'm finally starting to review more on my channel, then I could see myself wanting to buy stuff to review. But I think the, the biggest takeaway is I need to not use having a YouTube channel. I, not, I, I need to stop using that as an excuse to buy everything. Yes, I can buy things to review on my YouTube channel, but it doesn't have to be everything. I feel like I need to put something underneath my eyes. I'm just going to go in with a touch of 
Oh, I'm gonna let my, I'm gonna let my mascara dry. Okay, I'm gonna let my mascara dry and then just do a little bit of something underneath like on my waterline because I feel like it just looks a little crazy right now. So a highlight combo I've been loving is using my Milk Lipstick and then like setting it with a more intense highlight. So I just go in with my finger and tap the lipstick on my cheek. I like hate, I hate applying makeup with my fingers. Who else is with me there? I literally hate it. Which is why it took me a long time to get, get along with the lipstick, but it also makes a really good, I've mentioned this so many times, you guys are probably sick of hearing it if you have, you know, followed me for any length of time, but I do love to use the lipstick as my gym highlights, just because it looks like a, nice beautiful sweaty sweat going on on your face and i love to have a good like sweaty look going on when i get to the gym because then i look like i'm working really dang hard even if i don't end up working that hard that day okay so you know i could just leave it like this which is pretty but if I'm looking for something a little more intense, I'll go in and set it. And today I'm going to use this shade out of the Hourglass Ambient Strobe Lighting Palette. And then I just tap this over that. I've really been enjoying the um, ColourPop Lunch Money like Super Shock highlight over this it's just a really good like it's a good pairing those two formulas the lipstick being like cream and then the the ambient oh my gosh not the ambient i can't speak the ColourPop super shock cheek formula it just works really well together but like i said i just set the highlight with a powder highlight and then we just get a little bit more intense. I feel like, I don't know if that intensified it too, too much. And then if I feel like it's not that well blended, I'll just go over top with my beauty blender just to make it look like it sinks in a little bit more. And we Gucci. And now that my mascara is dried, I'm just gonna take a little bit of Dusty Rose and smoke it out. Who else like can't stand to not have something on their lower lash line? Am I alone there? Okay, my camera rudely really cut me off. But I think we're looking okay. I think we're looking okay. I think we're gonna call it a day. Okay, I'm gonna scoot back just a little bit further, and this is gonna be how I'm going to work. Maybe I'll take. I also want to go scrunchie shopping today. I've been getting into hair accessories, so yeah. All right, guys, and that is going to conclude today's video. Just talking about how I'm feeling about my beauty budget, my low buy, whatever you want to call it. Just talking to you guys how I'm feeling mid-year. Leave me a comment and let me know what you're doing this year. Are you doing a beauty budget? Are you just going balls to the wall? Are you doing a low buy? I would love to hear from you guys. Love to hear how it's going. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in my next video. Bye.